we have a government in bed with an NFU leadership similarly welded to the idea of the massacre of thousands, thousands of mostly healthy animals, seemingly unable to hear the words of the scientific community that it will not work, deaf to the cries of hundreds of thousands of Brits who have signed the petition, and in contempt of the will of Parliament which at the end of a six-hour debate last November voted overwhelmingly against the cull. You have to remember, a few thousand years have gone by since badgers were here. They were here before us. Just a few years ago, there was another march in London. Some of you may remember when thousands of country dwellers assembled to protest against the then government's treatment of the countryside. The destruction of green belts, the closing of country communities like post offices, the lack of internet facilities, etc. The hideous irony is that what they got after protesting in this manner in the 2011 election was an arrogant, callous, out of touch administration who have done more to ruin the countryside in this country than any government in living memory. <laughs> This is the government which tried to sell off our forests, which is covering our now unrecognisable green belt with concrete at an unprecedented rate, which ever so quietly has been destroying buzzards' nests to keep alive the business of shooting birds, which is an industry which almost the whole of this government privately has an interest in. This is the government which is struggling desperately to find a way to re-legalise the despicable blood sports of fox hunting, stag hunting with dogs and hare yeah. hunting. This is the government which abstained on a European vote to ban the pesticides which have been implicated in the demise of the bee population. This is what the last countryside protest got for their money. Let's hope we will be more successful this time. Let's hope we get one day a decent, compassionate government who will truly start to treasure this country's greatest heritage, its magnificent wild animals. For what use is a countryside with no wildlife? That's what this government is taking us to. Today, June the 1st, 2000. 113, this war against the badgers, against the badger killers, is not over. It's hardly begun, because this is a fight for the very lives of 100,000, at least, innocent animals. But even more than that, it's a fight against the old-fashioned, bloody-minded, ignorant attitude that human beings and money and political power are all that matter. It's a fight for the rights of the other creatures on this planet, it's a right for their very right to live in these islands. But we will never give up. We will never give up. We will fight this cull as long as it takes to place it where it belongs in the history of barbaric acts. We will fight with every means that is legal, decent and compassionate because decency and compassion are what we're about. We will not be victimising farmers and their families. Remember, there are elements of the farming community who have been behaving indecently, illegally and vindictively to badgers and other wild animals, to people like us, and even to those of their colleagues who dared to disagree with their obsession with badger culling. But this mess that British farming is in, by and large, is not the fault of the average decent, hard-working farmer. It's the fault of bad leadership over the years. In the corridors of Europe, the image of British farming as they discuss it, is not very pleasant to hear. They regard us as cheap and sloppy. They point out that Britain is the only country which has a serious TB problem and that this is no accident. I want to speak to the farmers now because I know some of them are listening. There are many of you farmers who are very supportive of our views and working with us towards vaccination. There are many more who are nervous of even speaking to us because of pressure from their colleagues. But I want to speak to every farmer, every tenant farmer and landowners of all levels, especially those of you who have put your faith in this badger cull. We believe here that British farmers have been let down by their leadership. 
They've been let down by an NFU over the years, which didn't look after the small farmer and thought it knew better than the European guidelines. An NFU which restocked carelessly after the foot and mouth outbreak. An NFU which has gone along with the incorrect application of a scandalously unreliable skin test to take reactive cows out of herds and failed to enforce proper movement of controls, movement controls of cattle and decent biosafe husbandry. We believe farmers have been let down by successive governments too, who did not care enough about you and were not clever enough and were too cheap to take the proper steps to eradicate TB, including the implementing of a vaccine for cows. Yeah. Right now, the European Commission, so often used as an excuse by British governments, is offering to help us move towards validation and licensing of our cattle vaccine, based on BCG, the same stuff which cured our children years ago. And of the essential diva test, which discriminates between an animal which is vaccinated and an animal which is infected. They are ready to go. It will take probably 10 years, but it can happen. But even now, Patterson, Heath, Cameron and co are refusing to prioritize this, to prioritize it. They're standing around, they're striding around, telling us vaccination is years away and wasting everybody's time with a cull which cannot solve the problem. This cull cannot even make a significant dent in bovine TB in the next 10 years. Do not believe those claims about Ireland, about New Zealand, about Australia and white-tailed deer, etc. in Michigan. The statistics have been massaged to produce the answer they want. Culling of wildlife has never eradicated TB in any country of the world. Vaccination of our national herd is probably realistically 10 years away. Does that sound like a long time? No. Does that no. sound like we shouldn't be waiting? We must do something now, right? Surely we must do something right now. But the something that this government has decided to do and has sold to farmers has been shown by science to be ineffective. It has been rejected by Parliament. It's unacceptable to nigh on a quarter of a million people who have signed our petition on the government's own website. Patterson has now admitted that culling this whole bloody mess will be going on for the next 25 years. Shame. Shame. So how does 10 years sound now? 10 years sounds all right to me. At the end of this misery of 25 years, when the farmers will still have to be paying for their culling, and we'll, we the taxpayers will still be compensating them, there will still be breakdowns, TB will still be there, farmers will still be suffering, cows will still be suffering, <coughs> and the badgers pursuing this course will be a pitiful remnant a tragic ghost of a species which has been in Britain since long before we were. That's the future if you go with this cull. Stop the cull! <laughs> this cull is a cheap, shoddy pig in a poke offered dishonestly to farmers as a solution to their misery. It will fail and possibly damage farming's relationship with the public forever. We offer a solution, vaccination, and we're already cooperating in community-led vaccination schemes. People of the UK, do not let this atrocity happen. Do not let it happen. The timing of this is spectacular. We have some great news. This is not all doom and gloom. We have great news. We have what we were looking for for the last few months. We have an opposition day debate this Wednesday in which this matter will be debated again with the full strength of a full-on parliamentary debate in the House of Commons. This is not a backbench debate like last time. This is an opposition day debate. And the government surely will have to listen, won't they? Yeah. We may win, we may lose, but it goes on. And in the end, we will be winning. How can you help? Please write to your MP tonight. Write to him on paper with a pen Tell him that you require him or her to have the courage to vote against this hideous, wasteful, cruel, and morally bereft cull. Tell him you need him to speak for you and vote against the cull. We will win this war for, for decency. It may, time, it may take time, but we will prevail. The other good news that we have, strangely enough, was in the Independent yesterday. 
Now, the Independent up to now has been pro-cull, and it's very significant that they've changed their minds. What's even more significant is that they've uncovered the information that the one piece of evidence which might have convinced people that the cull was still worth doing has now disappeared. It now emerges that this cull will cost the taxpayer more than it will save it in terms of what it can achieve, even at best. So the last evidence, the last reason for culling is gone. And I ask you to stick to our guns. Please let's all stay together. We, we all started out together, we were all in together. We will have a decent Britain one day and we will have a Britain in which animals are treated with respect. Thank you so much.